What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell, and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 2 guide. Today we're going to be talking about the races of Baldur's Gate 2. If you've never played this game, the only thing you really need to worry about is that this is the Forgotten Realms. So if you're familiar with the Forgotten Realms races, then you're already ahead of the curve in terms of knowing sort of at least the basics of the lore versions of what you're going to be playing. However, because this is an earlier edition of Dungeons & Dragons, it's not the 5th edition that many modern players are used to. This goes back to 2nd edition AD&D, and so the rules are quite a bit different. So when you're reading through the races, you're going to come across some language that might confuse you because the bonuses and the stats and the pros and cons are a lot different than modern day D&D. So without further ado, we're going to jump in and take a look at what you can see when you're creating a character from scratch. So we're going to click New Game here. And we're going to skip the gender part because it doesn't really matter. I'm going to skip this because it doesn't really matter. What we're looking for is the race descriptions. Now you'll look here, we've only got seven to start off with. We don't have all of the advanced stuff like the tieflings and so on and so forth that you see in more modern versions of D&D. This goes back again to second edition AD&D, so the races were very simple. You have human, elf, half-elf, dwarf, halfling, gnome, half-orc, and that is it. Now, the human is very standard. Humans are the predominant race in Faerun. They rule most of the significant empires, excuse me, and kingdoms of the Forgotten Realms. They are the most social and tolerant of the races, excepting perhaps the halflings. And they may advance as any class and are also the only race that can dual class. Worth noting is that humans may not multi-class, but they do have the benefit of being able to pick any class in the game and they are the only race that could dual class that may be useful to you when you're creating whatever build you're going to end up playing uh, through your playthrough of Baldur's Gate 2. Don't forget by the way if you have played Baldur's Gate 1 you can import your character into Baldur's Gate 2 and just continue playing from there. Elves tend to be shorter and slimmer than humans, with features that are finely chiseled and delicate, and they speak in melodic tones. Elves are looked upon as being frivolous and aloof. They concern themselves with natural beauty, dancing, frolicking, and other similar pursuits, with humor that is clever, as are their songs and poetry. There's six racial divisions of elves within the realms. Gold elves, moon elves, wild elves, sea elves, dark elves, the drow and winged elves known as the avarial now if i'm not mistaken you don't get the option to actually pick any of the sub species of elves when you create an elf you just you would pick an appropriate portrait and then change the uh, skin color and everything else of your character to uh, the hair color and all those things to represent the type of elf that you would want to play but in this uh, version of the game elves have the following traits they are 90 percent resistance against charm and sleep magics they have infravision they have a plus one to hit versus well that doesn't really matter thaco stands to, for to hit armor class zero for those of you who are fifth edition players all this really means is that they have a plus one bonus to hit against anything with a bow short sword or long sword they also have a five percent bonus to open locks five percent open bonus to pick pockets five percent Move silent bonus and 10% hide and shadows bonus. Plus one dex, minus one con. So you get to be a little more dexterous at the uh, uh, loss of some of your hit points and constitution. Half elves are a mix of human and elves. Handsome, with good features from even their parent races. Uh, half elves have curiosity, inventiveness, and ambition of their human ancestors, and the refined senses, love of nature, and artistic tastes of their elven ancestors. They are 30% resisting it against charm and sleep magics. They have infravision and get a 10% bonus to pick pockets and a 5% bonus to hide in shadows. Dwarves are short and stocky, easily identifiable by their size and shape, with ruddy cheeks, dark eyes, and dark hair. They tend to be dour and taciturn, taciturn, however you want to pronounce that. They are given to hard work and care little for most humor. They enjoy beer, ale, mead, but most of all, they love gold. There are four racial divisions of dwarves within the realms. Shield dwarves, gold dwarves, wild dwarves, and dwergar. Dwarves get a plus two bonus to saving throws versus paralysis, poison, and death magic, as well as rod, staff, and wand, and versus spell with additional bonuses based on their constitution. They have infravision and a 10% bonus to open locks, 15% to find traps, 5% to detect illusion, and 10% to set traps. With a plus one con, negative one dex, and negative two charisma, they be little, ugly, hairy creatures. 
Next up are halflings. They are short, generally plump people, much like small humans, with round faces that are broad and often quite florid. Their hair is typically curly, with the tops of their feet covered with coarse hair, and if they could be, they would be called hobbits, but they can't, so they're called halflings. Otherwise, they prefer the comforts of home to dangerous adventuring, and they enjoy good living, rough humor, and homespun tales. There are three racial divisions of halflings within the realms, the Harefoot, Tallfellow, and Stout. As a race, halflings have the following traits. Plus two bonus to saving throw versus Prolasis Poison and Death Magic, along with Rod Staff and Wanted Spell, and additional bonuses based on Con. Plus one to hit with slings. And they get a plus five bonus to open locks, plus five to find traps, plus five to pick pockets, plus ten to move silently, and fifteen percent to hide in shadows, plus one to their decks, but they also have a minus one to strength and a minus one to wisdom. Gnomes are the race that I don't know of anyone who likes to play them, but they are kin to the dwarves, noticeably smaller than their distant cousins. They are proudly maintain that they are less rotund than dwarves, and most have dark tan or brown skin with white hair and rather large noses. They have lively and sly sense of his humor, especially for practical jokes, and they have a love of nature that is only matched by their love of gems and jewelry which they share with the dwarven kin. There are racial divisions of gnomes within the realms, two in particular, the rock gnomes and deep gnomes, also known as the Sphirfneblin. Plus two bonus to saving throws versus rod staff, wand, and spell with additional con bonuses, and for vision, plus 5 open locks, plus 10% find traps, 5% move silently, 5% hide in shadows, 10% delete collusion, 5% set traps, plus 1 intelligence, negative 1 wisdom, and of course the half-orc. Everyone's favorite, Berserker. Born from a union of humans and orc parents, they are as tall as humans, but heavier due to their muscular builds, with greenish pigmentation, sloping foreheads, jutting jaws, prominent teeth, and coarse body hair that makes their lineage plain for all to see. In the lands of Om, half-orcs are tolerated, as unlike in the north, the people of Om haven't had centuries of warfare with orc kind. They are known for their great strength and have a plus one strength, plus one con, negative two intelligence, and they can have information. So this will help give you a general overview of the bonuses that you're going to get when you're choosing one of the races in Baldur's Gate 2. A lot of these bonuses apply to the thieving side of things, but the to hit bonuses are a big deal if you're going to be doing something that is DPS based. Um, tanks, I'm always a big fan of either going half orc or dwarf um, because of the constitution bonuses. Um, gnomes are great for um, mages, halflings are great for thieves, dwarves make good thieves as well. Half elves can be just about anything, um, as can humans. but. I don't know. The elf bonus with bows, short swords, and long swords make them a great pick for any sort of ranged character since you're going to be relying upon your decks more than anything else. So food for thought. And of course, if you just want somebody who's going to do brute strength um, and you don't care about the charisma, half work is a great choice. Otherwise, you could just go with the human to dual class. Um, or you can go with the dwarf. Either way. Hopefully this gives you a rundown of the various options that are available to you. Again, these are similar. I think they're actually exactly the same as Baldur's Gate 1. So if you are rolling over a character from the first game and you have an imported save file, you can just port that straight into Baldur's Gate 2 and pick up where you left off. Otherwise, the options are pretty much the same. If you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And please consider supporting. You can do pre-programmed amounts with the super chats, super stickers, and super thanks here on YouTube. You all can also plug in whatever you want. You can adjust those amounts. Do you know five dollars, fifty dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever you want, whatever you can contribute. It keeps me on the air and it keeps me going full time. And of course, you can also opt for the memberships here on YouTube. They start with two ninety nine a month and go up. We also have memberships over on our Patreon page, and beyond that, there's a Discord channel, which hopefully we'll see you over there as well. So. Thanks for following along. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, safe gaming and have fun in Faerun, everybody. Cheers.